Today's Gospel records the beginning of Jesus' public teaching ministry as he takes out onto a boat and teaches the crowds that are gathered to hear him. This then flows into uh, the miraculous catch for Simon and his fishing partners and then Simon's response uh, to this miracle. We're going to track uh, the relationship between Jesus and Simon as it develops, how Simon becomes a disciple and the process by which that happens. Now before the event with Jesus teaching from the boat and then the miraculous catch, Simon has already encountered Jesus. Uh, Jesus had healed his mother-in-law. Now, I personally uh, have a fantastic mother-in-law, and I was telling a friend actually just the other day that my mother-in-law is a real angel. Uh, and he replied, gee, you're lucky, mate. Mine's still alive. Uh, anyway, we enter the scene where Jesus is surrounded by the crowds, and he gets into the boat to teach uh, so that they can hear him better. A simple practical solution, you would think, and a great one to think of uh, in the moment, but it just so happens that it is Simon's boat. Straight after his teaching, he tells Simon uh, to put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. To which Simon replies, Master, we have worked all night long, but we have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. Uh, interesting to hear the, the words of the fisherman. We've, we've done this all night, we've had no luck. But yet there is this level of respect that Simon already has for Jesus, likely off the back of the healing that he has witnessed, um, and maybe some of the teaching that he has overheard in the crowds that are joining. But notice how this changes. A, a certain level of respect is about to change. Simon and his partners go fishing, as being instructed to by Jesus, and they catch more fish than they are able to handle. There is another message here in, in that the following of Jesus' voice is where we will find fruit and fruitful mission. We must hear the voice of Jesus and follow that if we want to be fruitful. But what does Simon say at this point after this miraculous catch? But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Notice how Simon has gone from calling Jesus master with a level of respect that is there through to now calling him Lord. He has perceived something in this miracle and something in this person that he hadn't seen beforehand in the healing or in the teaching that had taken place prior to this event. His response is what tells us this. Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For Simon, Jesus has now become more than just the latest man of God who was able to heal and to teach well, and to draw a crowd. In this person's presence, Simon feels his whole life has been called into question. This has such an effect on him that he is willing to give up everything to follow Jesus. He takes up the call uh, he is given to the mission of God to be involved in that work. Now, this is the pathway uh, of Simon becoming a disciple of Jesus. Uh, and I think a pathway that we can recognize in uh, those coming to faith. There is an initial coming into contact with Jesus uh, and a level of respect, a level of uh, interest in this person. But then there is a point where uh, that person's eyes are opened to the wider sense of who this person Jesus really is. And realizing what that means, the implications of that, that this is God in the flesh, this is someone significantly different uh, from my experiences in the world, which calls into question uh, some of the things of my life and who I am. There is an authority that is there uh, that, that is experienced over our lives. Then the response to that, the following of Jesus, the reor reorientating of our lives around Jesus and around his call uh, that we are graciously given to be part of. Discipling then is about engaging in God's mission and inviting others into that. We've seen the pathway of discipleship, but then discipling as we become uh, disciples. We are called to engage with God's mission and to invite others uh, to be part of that. 
Uh, during the week this week, I met again with Jerry Mead as she begins to uh, start up again Repair Cafe for this year. Starts on the fourth Sunday of the month, this February, uh, at, for our official opening where the Mayor and Bishop Steve will be joining us for that. So very much looking forward to that. The Repair Cafe is about inviting others into an aspect of what God is wanting to do in the world, particularly around the way in which we care uh, for our possessions, that we are able to reuse those and not keep on putting them in the landfill, inviting others to be part of what God is doing in the world. So let's journey through uh, Simon's uh, story again and the way Jesus led him to faith, the steps for that. Uh, and then I guess thinking through what it is our call to, as we are uh, making disciples ourselves. So the first thing that happened from for Simon was the healing of his mother-in-law. This created a level of respect for Jesus and a level of openness uh, to him. Who are the people that currently respect us? Who are the ones that are open to listening to us, to hearing what we have to say, uh, that we have that relationship with, maybe uh, an influence with? Jesus then built on this, built on this respect that he had, this openness that Simon had to him. Using Simon's boat, I don't think, was just a happenstance that it happened to be there. Jesus was working on developing this relationship that he had with Simon to the point where he was able to challenge Simon to make a step of faith. Uh, challenging Simon to respond to his words, to his call. So he said to him, put out the nets. And Simon was uh, in a position and in a place where he would respond positively to that, would give it a go, would make a step uh, of faith. So for us, this is about hanging out with people, about developing our relationship, relationships with people, our friendships with, other, with others. It is then about challenging people uh, appropriately, and as we see opportunity to do that, to make steps of faith where they will then have the chance to encounter God. What are those steps of faith that we might be able to challenge people uh, to? Now, it is interesting to note where this encounter took place for Simon, this encounter he has with uh, the living God through Christ. Jesus didn't say to him, uh, let's go to the synagogue next week, uh, or even, you know, why don't you come along to my care cell for a time? Yes, Jesus uh, rather, Simon was present during the teaching of Jesus, so was in that context. And, and for many, that context works for them to hear about who God is and to develop in their understanding and, and faith in that context. But actually, where Simon met God, was, in, was uh, brought face to face with uh, an, an encounter with the living God, was in his daily experience as a fisherman. It was in the place where he had tried and failed uh, in, in the context of his uh, occupation. What challenge might we give to people to make a step of faith in their current circumstances, in the struggles that, they've, that they find themselves, in the things that are too hard for them? What might be the challenge that we could give to them in that place? When we think through that, when we think of, of offering a challenge to someone to have faith, uh, to trust in God uh, in whatever way that may be, and we'll talk about that a little bit, what we find is it actually requires a lot of faith from us as well uh, to give that challenge. Uh, it is hard to do that. We have to be having faith ourselves to be hearing from God uh, to issue such a challenge. What might that look like uh, for us to issue a challenge of faith, a step of faith? My mum tells a story that when she first remarried, uh, she inherited a couple of daughters-in-law uh, one, of whom, one of whom she really struggled with uh, and in her relationship with. She found her very difficult. Uh, they didn't get on very well and found that everything that she did really uh, got up her nose or was, was difficult uh, for her. She was telling this to uh, her minister at the time of the, of the local church and her minister challenged her to say, let's pray about this, that God will change your attitude, your heart towards this person. Mum agreed to pray with the minister, but she said she had a fair dollop of doubt that this would really make any impact on her. Uh, struggled to see how that was going to happen. Anyway, the minister prayed and mum was absolutely uh, shocked to find that the next day, uh, even though the daughter-in-law was carrying on and in the same way, in the same situations that were happening before her, mum's attitude to that person 
had completely changed. It no longer irritated her or irked her in anywhere near the same way at all. In fact, she had a, a really changed attitude to, towards this person. A challenge to someone as simple as that, to, to pray that things might change, to see what God might do. Let's, let's see what God might do in this situation. Let's just pray and see what happens. Which then becomes an opportunity for people to experience God for themselves. Not being told about God and what God's like and all of those things. But hey, let's give it a go and see if you might be able to experience what God can do for you. A challenge as simple as that. Let's pray about it. Let's see what God will do. Finally, Jesus then calls Simon to, to mission. As he is confronted uh, with the nature of who God is, uh, there's a challenge then to join in the mission of God. And I think it's very interesting that uh, for Simon, Jesus goes straight to evangelism and mission. Come and catch people. Come and tell people about Jesus straight away. You think he would start off light with this new convert. You know, why, why, don't, you, why don't we get you serving teas and coffees first? Uh, you know, take it easy and just be part of the group and serve and see how things go and then we might ramp it up from there. Now, of course, we know through the Gospels that uh, there was scaffolding that took place for Simon and the disciples. Jesus showing them uh, what he was doing and taking them along with him and then giving them opportunities to do the same. But a call to follow Christ is a call uh, at the outset to join God in what he is doing, to be part of that, to participate and the fullness of what that means. And that's a great call uh, that we, we need to remember that that is what it is fundamentally about. Uh, I love the story that Nicky Gumbel uh, tells in the Alpha series uh, when he was uh, trying to get a young guy. Well, a young guy was wanting to come to faith, but he had one problem with that in, in that he didn't want to have to go and tell everybody about it and be that kind of guy that tells everyone about their Christian faith all the time. So Nicky Gumbel got creative and said to him, hey, look, for you, uh, you don't have to uh, do that. Uh, I've heard from God and, and he's told me that you don't have to do that. So you don't worry, need to worry about that. You just need to make the decision if you want to follow Christ. So the, the guy said, oh, that's fantastic. Uh, I, I, want to, I want to follow Christ. I want to accept Christ into my life. Uh, so they prayed a prayer. And the first thing that the boy did was get up, run downstairs and, and go to his family. Hey, everybody, I've become a Christian. And I've been told that I don't have to tell a single soul about it. Isn't it fantastic? So he had just gone on and done exactly uh, what uh, he was fearful of doing, uh, but as part of the call to, to share uh, with others what, he, what God is doing in our lives. We are that excited about it. I just want to tell you a little thing that's been happening um, over the summer, which I think is fantastic and kind of exemplifies what we've been talking about. Kay and Raywin have been taking a discipleship group uh, with, a, with a group of girls, and Really, that the focus of that group, although it's been Bible study and all of these things, has been about equipping those girls uh, to lead their own groups, giving them the tools that they need to make disciples, to disciple others. Yes, they have grown uh, themselves in their own faith and their own understanding of who God is and, and their ability to communicate with Him. But they, they, the focus has been, how can we make disciples? How, what are the skills that we need uh, to do that? If a mission focus isn't where we start with, if that isn't at the, the very heart of our call in following Jesus, we will soon devolve into being uh, just another social club. That's more about meeting our own needs uh, than equipping people uh, to lead others to faith, which is what the call of God that is placed on our lives. Go and make disciples, as we hear in Matthew's Gospel. This is a great thing for us to be thinking about, to be considering and meditating on and working through as we enter into this time of being in the house church model. Maybe our reliance on the regular Sunday service has actually done us a disservice, has become a barrier for us and us being equipped to not only be disciples, but also in our engagement with the call to make disciples. How could this time as we meet in smaller groups and in our homes, could be about those things, about being a, a disciple, an active disciple, and also making disciples. We need to think through that uh, ourselves and also in our groups. What role could you take up in what is happening at the moment? How could you be active in that? Uh, maybe praying out loud uh, in a group or leading prayers, maybe leading a reading. Or, or whatever it might be in the context of meeting together. 
Uh, we are all going to be called on to be a bit more active at this time. What might that look like for you? And to see that as God's challenge to you to be growing uh, in your faith. Maybe if you are alone at this time and watching uh, live streams and things like that, maybe it could be about inviting others to join you uh, to watch parts of the service and to discuss with people what they think about that. If you're meeting in groups, inviting people you know to be part of what you are doing that it wouldn't normally be a part of that. Uh, a great opportunity where people might be a bit reticent about coming into a big church building and a, and a bigger group of people they don't know, but might be very open to coming along into, into your house uh, with friends that they know uh, and sharing in what you are doing at this time. Crafting that to suit that, those people that might want to be part of that. Even then deciding as a group, what might it be that we engage in uh, over this time with those outside our church community, doing that as a group, maybe uh, serving a local need or whatever that may be. This is the opportunity and time that we may think about those things. And then in our groups, thinking through together how we might challenge people with an aspect of the gospel, how we might challenge people to make a step of faith uh, in those small groups, to be able to, to throw that around a bit. When are the moments that I... I have the opportunity to do that. Um, and sometimes when I, I haven't taken that opportunity, how could I do that better the next time? Uh, to share those with, with, with one another. And in that, find the support and encouragement, maybe some of the accountability that we need uh, to challenge people with steps of faith. Shall we pray? Father God, thank you that you have called us, uh, invited us to join you in your mission of catching people, of I've seen people come into a relationship with you, a saving relationship with you. Help us to know what those steps of faith that we might challenge others to take, whether it be uh, from very small things to encouraging people to pray, uh, through to bigger calls, uh, to, through to miraculous uh, calls that, that might, we might see you at work. Uh, equip us, strengthen us during this time to think creatively about our own growth as disciples and uh, for those around us that God is calling us to grow as well. We commit ourselves to you and to your service in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless.